No Rest for the Wicked is a game that may be flying under a lot of people's radars. Not only does this game have a beautifully crafted world, but it also looks to have combat systems that would appeal to Souls-like and ARPG enthusiasts alike. In this video, I'm going to do a bit of a deep dive on the combat, going over what we know so far, along with some light speculation. As always, if you like this type of video, consider subscribing to help out the channel. With all that out of the way, let's get started. First thing I want to go over is simply the combat style that you'll find in No Rest for the Wicked. Moon Studios is trying to leave their mark on the action RPG genre, taking a lot of inspiration from Souls likes and fighting games, which you can definitely tell. This game is very much animation driven like you'll see in something like Dark Souls. Enemies will have well telegraphed attacks to let players know how to deal with them. In terms of player animations, you will be locked into your attacks, so attacking at the wrong time will lead you to taking damage and being punished. This is going to mean spacing is going to be extremely important. For those of you who don't know, spacing is a concept present in Souls games and the fighting game genre where you try to fight your opponent in a range that's most effective for your loadout while giving you defensive options at the same time. Parries will also be available in No Rest for the Wicked, but as far as I can tell, they might be specific to certain weapon types like the double daggers. And it also looks like there might be some grabs in this game, which could also be specific to some weapon types. But the final item I want to bring up here is the importance of weight or your equip load in this game. Like Souls games, there are three different weight tiers. There's light, medium, and heavy. Light equip load will make it so that when you dodge, you're actually doing a quick step or a quick dash. And this is going to consume very little stamina, and it's also very quick. Medium equip load is a dodge roll, which is a little slower and consumes more stamina. But finally, you have the heavy load, which is going to make you basically fat roll, which is very slow and will consume a lot of stamina. So similar to Souls games, you're probably going to want to try to avoid a heavy equip load. Moving along though, let's talk a little bit more about the weapons and the actual combat mechanics in No Rest for the Wicked. I think the biggest appeal for this game is simply how flexible the combat system is supposed to be. There are no classes in this game, and instead the weapon you equip sort of determines your class if you want to look at it that way, which might be a little more akin to Souls games or maybe something like Monster Hunter. We haven't seen all of the weapon categories in No Rest for the Wicked as of right now, but from the different gameplay trailers and interviews, we know that there will be at least short swords, daggers, staffs, uh, great swords, some bows, maces, and probably a few others that I'm forgetting about at this point. These weapons at a base level will determine the animations and the stats that you're going to be scaling off of. But there's a way to make weapons cater even more specifically to your desired playstyle, and those are called runes. These runes can be freely extracted and attached to different weapons, so there shouldn't be any concern about losing the runes that you've acquired. When you equip a rune to your weapon, it unlocks a powerful attack called rune attacks. These attacks use a special resource called focus, which is accumulated by attacking enemies, and probably through using consumables, but I'm um, not entirely certain on that. These different rune attacks serve a couple different purposes. They might give you some mobility, they might give you area of effect damage, or possibly just a huge burst of damage, just to name a few examples. Weapons you receive will come in four different rarities. The common weapons are going to be your most flexible weapons, but don't offer much in the way of stat boosts. By flexibility, I believe the developers are giving us the ability to add four different rune attacks to the common weapons, but this is just my speculation right now after looking at the game UI. This would mean the trade-off for a common weapon having weaker stats is that you can give it more rune attacks, and that just allows you to uh, be more flexible with the different situations. However, this doesn't offset the fact that you still need to generate focus in order to use these different rune attacks. The next rarity is rare. These items only allow for the use of two rune attacks, but they offer positive enchantments. These enchantments influence your playstyle in various ways. For example, it might increase your equip load, or it might increase how much focus you're generating while attacking enemies. Essentially, the trade-off is that you get more passive power, but with less flexibility since you won't have the option to equip more rune attacks. 
The third rarity is Cursed Gear. These are nearly identical to rare weapons, which is that they offer very powerful positive enchantments, and they can equip up to two rune attacks as well as far as we can tell. However, these weapons come with a negative or cursed enchantment, which hinders your passive power as a trade-off. So far, I believe the only negative power we've seen so far is from the screenshot provided by the developers, and this negative power reduces your total equip load, possibly forcing you into a heavier weight category. The last rarity are unique weapons, which have up to four rune attacks and a set of only highly beneficial passives, so basically like curse gear but without the drawbacks, and because of how the developers kind of talked about these weapons, I sort of assumed their positive enchantments are predetermined and can't be changed, but I hope I'm wrong on that one. Finally, I wanted to quickly talk about the attack types for your weapon. Similar to Souls game, each weapon looks to have a set of animations for each weapon type. But there are two attack types, I guess if that makes sense. There's a heavy or charged attack, and then there's your normal light attacks. The normal attacks are just quick hits and generate a little bit of focus, but charged attacks have a longer animation, deal more damage, and I believe they generate more focus as a result. Moving on to the final section of this video is just a bit of an analysis on the HUD that we've seen so far. Starting in the top left, we see that there are three different bars. First is the red bar, which is going to be our health, which is pretty self-explanatory. Next is the orange bar, which is the focus bar. It's possible to have more than a single focus bar, which likely plays into more of a mage build, so as you level up your focus, you acquire more focus bars and not all rune skills will consume a full bar. The final bar in the top left is what I believe to be the experience bar. Next, I'm gonna be focusing on the center of the screen where we see two circular UI components. First is going to be a green circle, which I believe to be your stamina. This will allow you to perform your physical actions like dodge rolling and doing your light or charged attacks. But there's also a separate red circle, which appears sometimes, and I'm not entirely sure what this is, but I believe it's something like a poise bar. Depleting this bar might mean that you're briefly staggered and susceptible to follow-up attacks. The final UI section is the bottom left, and this is basically your loadout actions. We can see that there are consumables in the 12 o'clock section. It's unclear if these are only consumables to heal yourself, though. At the 3 o'clock section, it looks like we have our equipped main hand weapon, and this is where uh, selecting this button will perform your different basic attack inputs. So basically, these are just separate from your rune attacks. The 6 o'clock section looks like another consumable section. Perhaps this one is where a buff might go or something to restore focus if uh, something, I don't know, something like that. And finally, the nine o'clock section looks like it's going to be your offhand. So if you have something like a shield, this will allow you to block. And with that, that's going to wrap up this video on what we know about combat so far in No Rest for the Wicked. Does this combat style look like something you're going to be excited for? Let me know in the comments. This was Goober Troy saying thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.